One of the problems I've been coming up against recently is how to secure my phone to a tripod so I can shoot some really good video. Today I'm going to show you how to engineer an adjustable phone adapter that will let you fit just about any mobile phone to a tripod. Let's get started. So this is my tripod. It's a Bembo Trekker. It's a really, really great bit of kit. But as you can see, it uses a normal tripod, quarter inch UNC mounting screw. And there is nothing like that on an iPhone. So to mount phone safely onto something like this at the moment, I'm just using blue tack, which is not sustainable at all. If we go to Thingiverse, uh, and there's other websites where you can get this kind of 3D printed content. But if we go here, type in iPhone tripod, a number of different options comes up. And this one here looks quite good, um, but there's always some sort of compromise. So I'd just rather design my own, then I know it's gonna meet the adjustment that I want, the strength that I want, and it's gonna have the, um, uh, the, the kind of user ergonomics that I'm interested in as well. So the first thing I like to do is just make a quick sketch of what I think the thing that I'm trying to design is going to look like. So I'm using Autodesk Sketchbook with my iPad, just scribbling a few ideas. Next step is to understand a little bit more about the device that we're trying to mount onto the tripod. So here I've got an iPhone X. Uh, it's in a case, and I want to keep it in the case, so I'm going to do my measurements uh, around the case while it's fitted to the phone. So we're going to measure the length, the width, and the height. Uh, and also the weight. So now we've got the dimensions, I'm going to translate those into some models. Now I'm using Autodesk uh, Fusion 360 as my main CAD modeling tool. I'm not going to show you how to use that tool, there's tons and tons of tutorials on YouTube of how to use that, but what I'm doing is I'm taking the dimensions from the previous step and plumbing those into the model. So you can see here, I've got the iPhone and I'm gonna use that geometry of the phone itself to build the other components. So we've got uh, an upper, a lower, uh, a knob, and then I'm also gonna add a screw and a nut to this assembly to hold it all together. Now that the model's complete, we're ready to do some simulation to make sure that the components are going to be strong enough but what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a fixed constraint to the bolt hole and to apply a linear load to the area around the curve section, which is where the phone is going to be in contact with that part of the assembly. The load I'm going to apply is derived from the mass of the phone. So let's say that's about 250 grams from our earlier measurements. Uh, the coefficient of friction between the iPhone and the PLA material is somewhere around about 0.5. Uh, so that gives us a clamping force of 5 newtons that we need to apply to stop that phone falling out of the uh, cradle. Now, I want to assume that there's a, a, some element of safety. It's an expensive device. I don't want it to fall out. I don't want it to drop on the floor. Uh, I'm going to be using this in some areas where there's going to be concrete, hard standing underneath it. So I'm going to apply a four times safety factor to that. So that gives us a uh, final load of around about 20 newtons that we're going to apply to this part of the assembly. To finish the setup of the simulation, I need to apply a material to the model. My 3D printer uses PLA, so I'm going to choose a generic plastic material to apply as there isn't a PLA material model in Fusion 360, uh, and that will finish off the setup. Uh, it normally takes a few minutes, so I'm going to shorten the sequence, and then we can get the results out. <laughs> So now the results are here, you can see we've got a safety factor of around 12.6, uh, which is well over the four that we are hoping for. So what that's telling me is that we can use a, a lower percentage of infill, um, something like a 10 or 15% infill, and that will give us the required strength with the required safety factor, um, but it means that our print's gonna be much faster and it's gonna use much less of the PLA material, but it's still gonna be very stiff because we've got some quite thick sections around the uh, around the bolt holes on this component in particular and obviously the lower part is one big solid block so using a low percentage infill will give us a very stiff part uh, which will stop the sh camera shaking around but it will give us uh, a very lightweight and very uh, durable part. The results from the simulation were really really good 
So we can now save these out as STLs and plug them into the 3D printer so we can start getting some real parts out. really pleased with how these parts come out. It took about two and a half hours for my Anycubic i3 Mega S to produce these parts. This is just white PLA, it's about 15 quid for a kilo. It's pretty cheap stuff, but it does produce really, really good, solid, uh, and quite dimensionally accurate parts. So I'm gonna break these off the raft and see what it all looks like. Here are all the parts that have come off the raft. Uh, the finish is really, really nice. Uh, it's tricky for you to see that on here. I did have a small issue. The thread is printed a little bit small. It's a bit tight on the tripod mount. So I'm going to show you a little trick of how to uh, improve the quality of that uh, without doing any real sort of sort of manual cutting or anything like that. Uh, but other than that, fundamentally, these are pretty, really good parts. The other thing I've done to this one, you can just about see down there, is I've tapped an M5 nut down this Hole, uh, which you would have seen in the thing. So uh, we've got a decent solid thread in there. And what I've also done to the knob part is I've got an M5 by 50 screw. Uh, I've dropped that into the countersink and then I've got a nut on the other end of that that makes up with the hex that moulded into the, the bottom end. Now this is designed to be a tight fit so all you do is just wind the screw in with a screwdriver and it will just drag that nut down until it bottoms out. Once that's nice and tight that's not going anywhere and you can use that to tighten up the uh, assembly. So a really nice way to clean up a thread in a 3D printed part is if you've got a, a screw or something like that that is metallic that you can heat up, what you can do is you can get it really, really hot, wind it into the thread, and then what that does is that resets the thread. It also helps to increase the strength of the thread because it helps melt all of that material together and uh, creates a really, really nice uh, clean thread for the screw to wind itself into. So now all the parts are printed and cleaned up, let's assemble it all and see what it looks like all together. That feels really, really solid. Really pleased with that. That all works a treat. Let's get it on the tripod and see what that looks like. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did like it, please give me a thumbs up. And if you've got any comments or feedback, then please leave them in the section below. I'm going to leave a link to Thingiverse where you'll be able to download these models. And if you've got through your own 3D printer, you'll be able to print them off as well. 
Stay tuned for more videos. In the future, I'm going to be looking at robot vacuums. I'm going to be integrating my phone into my car dashboard, looking at uh, robotic gradient simulators for the online cycling platform Zwift, uh, and loads of other good stuff. So please subscribe, and I'll see you next time on Engineer Anything. Thanks for watching.